not from above, but it is aptly, we're talking about the natural wisdom, another kind of wisdom, sensual, devilish. There's three kind of wisdom. Now, it is aptly because it is common sense. You remember common sense wisdom. Oh, he doesn't have a common sense. She doesn't have common sense. You already know that common sense is if you're going to go there, you have to open that door. That is common sense. Amen. Or if you're going to get into your house, it's locked. You need a key. That is common sense. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, it's common sense that there are chairs here. You shouldn't sit on the floor. It is common sense. This has aptly and sometimes I know somebody say common sense is no longer common because you see some people do some terrible things this day and you say, wow, you know, is common sense really common anymore? It's like it's expensive. <laughs> Amen. That is aptly wisdom. Then there is sensual wisdom. That is, this, that is the wisdom of senses. Intellectual capacity, intellectual wisdom. The wisdom you acquire from school. Go to medical school. Go to engineering school. I'll be a professor. But those wisdom are also limited. We have seen a lot of professors who have doctorate degree. Read everything in this world. That has this talk stranded, frustrated and broke. Why? Because their wisdom is limited. Does it answer to everything? Then he said there is another wisdom that is devilish or demonic or satanic wisdom. Now people who read all kinds of things, they read the star, they read everything. And it can be dangerous to your life. Witchcraft wisdom. Worldly wisdom. They tell you this is how to do it. That is against the will of God. It is devilish. Amen. But there is another wisdom, verse 6, 16 and 17. Verse 16 and 17. Verse 16 and 17. Say, for where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits. Without partiality and without hypocrisy. Amen. This is the wisdom of God. It is what? Above. It is from above. It is wisdom that is from above. It is wisdom that answers to every question. This same wisdom was upon Joseph. And what happened? Amen. The Bible talks about Joseph. That there is, you know, when there was famine in the land and they called Joseph to answer, Joseph gave them a precise information on what the king, Pharaoh at that time should do. This was a man that was locked up in the prison. That's to tell you that when you have wisdom, it's just a matter of time. You will come out from every imprisonment of your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. By the wisdom upon him, the people in the sense say, no, there is a guy in the prison. If you bring him here, his wisdom will solve our, our national crisis. It's wisdom. We solve our national problem. And they brought Joseph. The Bible said the, the gift of a man will make room for you. May God baptize you with wisdom. You see so many of you, you are loaded. But the God, the, 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 the people around you have not discovered what you are made up of. But Joseph was discovered and was brought out of the prison to solve a national crisis of famine. And he said, Lord, he he says, says, Mr. Pharaoh, this is what we are going to do. In Genesis chapter 41, verse 33, he said, this is what we are going to do. We are going to do this, we are going to do this, we are going to do that. And as soon as he provided information to them, a prisoner giving them an economy prescription for success. And as soon as he gave them, you know what the, 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 the king said? He said, is there any man in this place that is as bright, that is as wise as Joseph? Because Joseph said, you know, I've given you the information. You need to appoint a person that will do it. He said, there is nobody. We are not looking for anybody. You are the man. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, some of you don't know. Sometimes you walk in a place and the place is in disarray. You have the answer for that. He said, mm, what, what concerns me? I will just keep quiet. Don't keep quiet. Sometimes God reveals to you the solution for that organization by his spirit because you're a child of God to bring down the kingdom of God there. Joseph came and gave them the prescription. 
I said, no, no, I'll just keep my information to me, what concerns me. If the company wants to close that, I should close that. If the nation wants to go in this, I no, 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 no. As a child of God, he came and gave them the prescription. And guess what? He said, there is no man that is going to do this. Let us quickly read it. He said, now therefore, let Pharaoh look out. That is just a speaking. A man discreet, full of wisdom. That is what discreet means. A man that has good judgment and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said, no, who is that man except you? You are the main person that can do this. Amen? You are the main person that can do this. And then what now happened is, in verse 37, let's go to verse 37. He says, so the advice was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said to his servant, can we find such a one as this, a man whom the spirit spirit of God is. The spirit of God, the spirit of wisdom. Ladies and gentlemen, the spirit of God is inside you. And I pray there is no question that you will not be able to answer. There is no confusion that you will not be able to unravel. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He said, should we find a man? He says, nobody else. It is you. You are the man. So what actually brings greatness into Joseph was the wisdom that he displayed. I see God taking you to the place of prominence. I see God taking you to the place of greatness. I see God bringing you out of your imprisonment by the spirit of God that is in residence in your life and take you to the place that you belong in the name of Jesus Christ. In verse 39, the Bible said, then Pharaoh said to Joseph, in as much as God has shown you all these there is no man. There is no one. Amen. For as much as God had showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Praise the name of the Lord. There is no one. Amen. See, to be empowered, you have to know. Come on, say, I have to know. The Bible says, even Jesus knows what to do. Amen. You have to know. I come and say, I receive the spirit of knowledge. I receive the spirit of wisdom. I shall not be confused. I shall not be stranded. In the name of Jesus Christ. You have to know. The Bible says Joseph knew. And Joseph was in Egypt, in a foreign land. You see, it doesn't matter how people discriminate against your skin. Against the color of your skin. Somebody say, if you know, you know. You, you have heard that before. If you know, you do what? You know. If you know, you know. Because if you know, nobody can discount what you know. Nobody can pull you down. Amen? In your organization, if you know, you know. I remember recently, I, I think I shared this a lot. Amen? I shared this a lot. You know, a, a man called me in my of our company and they've been talking to a lot of publishers. And when they called me and over the phone and I was talking with them, by the time the man handed up, he said, wow, pastor, if you know, you know. He said, you know, we have to go with you because it seems you know your onions. That is the word he used, onions. I said, I've not heard that before. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. It's because if you know, you know. So many times people are stranded because they don't know. The, the labor of the foolish worries them all because they do not know the way to the city. God will show you the way to the city. You know where the city is? The way to your own destiny. The way to your own prominence. The way to your own promotion. The way to your own rising. In the name of Jesus Christ. It takes wisdom. It takes wisdom. You know, another man was Solomon. But we're going to skip Solomon. Let's go to Daniel. In Daniel chapter 1 verse 17 to 20. These four boys, Hebrew boys, were taken into captivity to Babylon. And the Bible said that they were interviewed by the king to determine their placement in the kingdom. They were interviewed by the king. Come on, somebody says to you, if you know, you know. They were interviewed by the king. And when he gets there, and that is why, listen to me. I found, at, listen, if you're a Nigerian, 
you're an immigrant here, you're a Christian, you can't afford to be a mediocre. You can't afford to be average. You can't afford. Listen to me. You are black is a jeopardy. And you are now from Africa having accent is a double jeopardy. Amen. You can't afford to do that. You can afford not to do things the right way. It should be done. You can afford to do things anyhow. And think that you represent your God. This guy were in the foreign land. They were four Hebrew boys. And they were to be interviewed by the king. Look at that. As for these young boys. When, after the king has interviewed them. Look at what they did. As for these young boys. These young men. God gave them. They could testify to it. That God gave them what? Knowledge and skill in all what? Learning and what? Come on everybody say what? Wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Amen. He has, God gave them wisdom. Wisdom for skills. Wisdom for knowledge. Wisdom for understanding. Pastor Victoria used this for prayer last Friday. It was so powerful that God will give us wisdom. That anywhere we stand, we stand out. Our voice is heard in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. See, these young men, the God gave them knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all vision and dream. Guess what? Verse 18. Now, at the end of the day, now at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the inner brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And look at the Nebuchadnezzar, the king. At that time, Babylon is the highest biggest empire in the world. Amen. Verse 19. Then the king interviewed them. Questioned them. And what happened? Among them and among them all, none was found like Daniel and Anaya, Meshur and Azara. Now look at what. Therefore they served before the king. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding about the kingdom, examine them. He found them ten times better than all the magicians in the land. Find them ten times better. Isn't that powerful? They came into the land and they examined them, interviewed them, and they were ten times better. When you are wise, no question. And at the end, the king set them over his kingdom. Say, these are the guys. These are the guys that are taking over. So I'm rounding up right now. Amen. So you need wisdom. One, for supernatural creativity. If you want to be creative and you need creativity for your children, for your family, sometimes money is not enough. You will have to be creative. Praise the name of the Lord. Sometimes you have a lot of bills to pay. You need what? Creativity. And sometimes you will need God to even help you to make decisions by the spirit of wisdom. And be creative. And bring beauty out of nothing. That they can give you small things and you can bring something significant out of it. It is not ordinary. It is by wisdom. Number two, wisdom gives you voice. The Bible talks about Solomon that his voice was heard from far and near. That people from far have to come and listen to the wisdom of Solomon. If you want to make impact in your generation and stand out, your voice has to be heard. And that voice is the voice of wisdom. When people know that you can solve problems, when people know that what you say really makes sense and can elevate them from their trouble to a solution, they want to come. Right now in my organization, in my company, I don't do more of physical, I do more of consultation. Amen? I do more of consultation because when they meet me and I'm able to answer some difficult question, answer, and some people will say, go and talk to that guy. A time is coming and the time is now. You will become a reference point for success. 
you will become a reference point, a reference point for great things, for supernatural lifting in the mighty name of Jesus Christ.